having me. I'm a big fan of uh, calendar and meeting new people. Actually, today, you know, this event is one of the few events where I'm meeting people I've never, I've never not met before. So. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I always start with uh, a question. Uh, who here has never heard of Mega East? Never heard of, oh, well, everyone has, okay, you've never heard of it. Okay, what do you think about the name, Mega East? Ooh, uh, the name, I like the naming, the naming. You're, you're the first person who have ever met who likes the name in, in one go. But Bybit has taken math. It's like, no, it's not cool. Uh, so, okay, you've never heard of Mega Who else has never heard of Mega East? Cool. So, um, when I first heard about Mega East, I thought it was a 2017 scam coin. It's like, why would anyone name their project Mega East, right? It's like, this thing can't, can't be real. But then I met my co-founder. Uh, I have two co-founders. Uh, Elon went to Stanford, uh, studied low latency data center compute for six years. And his job, you know what, I'm so short, I'm just going to go on. <laughs> so his job was uh, really building low latency software, right? Think about like, not millisecond, but nanosecond. So what he was researching was even too advanced for Google. That's what he did for six years. He was not a crypto bro. He probably could have gone to a hedge fund and make a lot of money, but somehow he was captured by blockchain technology. My other co-founder, his name is Lei. So Lei is your quintessential blockchain researcher. He studied high throughput distributed network at MIT for six years, right? I mean, I think bless his soul, he spent six years on like building consensus, and Ethereum research. Well, he could have done many other things in life. But that to be said, he is the most, uh, one of the most respected and knowledgeable crypto researchers that I've met at least. So when I actually, fun, fun joke, when I put Elon and Lay together with Vitalik, the four of us got on call in the early days of Mega East, and I just realized that Vitalik does not know blockchain as much as my co-founder. So I was like, wow, it's something to be bullish on. But when I met my co-founder, right, the two of them, uh, they presented me Mega ETH. I thought it was a scam coin. But when they explained to me what Mega ETH does, I was like, wow, this is actually some earth shattering technology. We're actually building the end game for a scalable blockchain, which I will explain in my keynote today what it is about, all about. Uh, but before I go into that, Mega, what is Mega in mathematics? Anyone here knows? Yes? 10 to the 6, yeah, okay. So you guys are all smarter than I did not know that. I thought MAGA stands for make Ethereum great again. And then they were like, you dumbass, like 10 to the 6. But I, I mean, I went to business school, right? How do I know? Um, so with that being said, I already give a soft introduction of the team. We are a team of highly technical founders and people who have been in crypto for a long time. So Elon wanted to stand for six years in, in uh, exploring low latency network. Lei was actually the first author of the super famous eigenlayer paper on data availability. So everyone here knows who Shriram is, right? So Shriram wrote the paper, but the first author was not Shriram, was my co-founder. Uh, so they've been collaborating uh, for six years uh, during his PhD journey at MIT. Myself, I used to lead global business development at Consensus. Uh, I was chatting with someone earlier uh, about wallets, and obviously at this point everyone hates MetaMask. So my sincere apology, MetaMask was one of my products. Uh, it's probably not as good as <laughs> it used to be, but uh, there's a lot of struggle in that. My other product was Infura. Anyone here who has used Infura? Oh, we have devs. Oh my god, fantastic. Have you used Truffle as well? Yeah, I sunset Truffle. It's kind of, yeah, I've seen, I've seen like the, the rise of different products and Sunset a few. So I've been in crypto for the last six years, working at Consensus until early this year, I joined Mega East as a co-founder. So our last founding uh, team member is Namek. Namek was a DAO enthusiast until 2021 when everything fell apart. Uh, I, I remember when I was in the DAO days and I thought DAO is going to take over the world. But, you know, we're, we're, we're all awake right now and, and know that, you know, don't go there. But Namek is also a prop trader. He used to manage like eight-figure book, uh, was a very profitable trader, but he actually wanted to build something. He joined us uh, to lead growth. So why am I saying Mega is innovates at the final frontier of blockchain performance? Every time I go on a podcast, 
the question, the first question I got was, why another layer two? Like anyone here is so fucking tired of having another layer two. Everyone is, right? But Mega is, is a layer two, but with the goal of being the real Solana. Mega East is gonna out Solana, Solana. And the reason we're able to do that is because we are completing the last puzzle piece in the performance uh, roadmap. So for the last five years, if you're building a scalable blockchain, what are you doing? You are building on top of Ethereum because Ethereum is the most decentralized layer one network. And then when you're building layer two, the first question you have is, what's my proof, right? What's my consensus model? So then you have the optimistic rollup, you have the zero knowledge proof, but that's about it. That's why we're seeing a host of layer twos that differentiate themselves by, I use this proof uh, model, I use that proof model, but none of them has made significant impact on performance. So now the question to you guys is, what is the fundamental bottleneck of performance for a distributed network? Anyone knows? Bandwidth. Bandwidth, yes. But in blockchain, the fundamental blo uh, blocker for performance is actually the sequencer. It's how your, how your uh, data are being constructed. And my co-founder, Elon, spent six months basically doing performance tests for EVM blockchain. And the conclusion was that 90% of the performance bottleneck come from Merkle Patricia tree. So then what we did is we fucking get rid of Merkle Patricia tree and we rewrote our own state try. And that is mega ETH innovation. I often consider ourselves as a deep tech company. No one, no one else did because you know, mega sounds like a scam coin. But, but really, uh, no one else could be like us who are innovating at the frontier of the sequencer. And the sequencer is the bottleneck of performance. And that brings me to a more, I would say, technical academic definition of our differentiation, which is called node specialization. And I promise if I explain this, for those who are not technical, you will also understand it because I'm not technical. So in a typical blockchain, every blockchain faces the um, decentralization and the hardware business dilemma. Do we agree on that? It's, it's practically law of physics. It's like, you know, Elon can go to Mars, well, Bitcoin, you know, hitting $1 million, this law would not change. And then you have also four different types of nodes in a blockchain network. You have something, a node that's validating, one that's, that's finalization, fin uh, finalization, dissemination, and the last one is sequencing and execution. Remember what a sequencer and execution do. What is it? It is a performance bottleneck, right? Remember? and you're gonna use it later. So what happens right now is most blockchains, if you're layer one, you have this like skinny bunny, right? It's very light, skinny, it jumps around. And it does like validation, final, finalization, dissemination, execution, all at the same time. But because this bunny is skinny, it's very light, it's agile. But what it can't do is it cannot execute a lot of transaction, right? The trade-off is taking is being very decentralized, but very non-performant. So what is this blockchain? Decentralized, not performant. Exactly. That's your ethl one ethl ones node, skinny bunnies all over. So now you have a very fatty one. Freaking powerful in terms of executing transaction, but so lazy because so fat can't move around. So it's extremely centralized, but Extremely fast and powerful. What is this blockchain? A bingo, it is Solana. So both blockchains have taken their own side of the trade-off and they've worked, right? Their usage on both blockchain right now. What Mega is does, and this is the final frontier of blockchain performance, is because we specialize different nodes for different hardware requirements. So when we think about validating a block, you don't need a beefy sequencer, a beefy node to validate network, right? It should be as light as you can run it on your phone. That bunny needs to be fucking skinny over there. You can't have a fatty bunny to validate. But then as we go on the curve of the trade-off, when we're at sequencing execution, remember, execution, sequencer is a performance bottleneck. You want that node to be as big 
as powerful as possible. So you need a fatty one over there. So what Mega East does is instead of having one type of bunny that performs all four types of notes, we have different size of bunny does different work. That's how node specialization work. And in more technical terms, so our validator, validation is prover. Our finalization is Ethereum and EigenDA. We use EigenDA for performance and also high throughput DA. Our dissemination node is our replica node. So it's a bit heavier. And lastly, we have one centralized sequencer. Right? People often say like, oh my Omega is a scam because they have one centralized sequencer. And I always tell them, you're being fucking stupid. And the reason is as layer two, you're not supposed to decentralize your sequencer. What's the point of layer two? Because you already have Ethereum as your security layer. By decentralizing your sequencer, you're reintroducing consensus, which means you're slowing down but not getting the benefit. It's like the most mid-curve take on building a blockchain. And that's why Mega is out Solana Solana, because we're the only chain that can exploit the physical limit of a hardware. And we can really dial it up and be really powerful because we use Ethereum as a security layer. And this is what we call Mega East, the first real-time blockchain. So because of our node specialization architecture, what you're really getting is 100,000 TPS, but more importantly, extremely low latency. Where does latency come from? Latency coming from consensus. You have to have different nodes agree on the state. But remember what Mega East does. Mega East has no consensus, so there's no latency. So our Mega East, our latency is 10 milliseconds. In comparison, Solana has 400 milliseconds, Arbitrum has 265 milliseconds. All the other layer ones have one second block time. Because layer one, again, you either have to choose a skinny bunny or a beefy bunny. You can't specialize your node, which means you can never have the centralized sequencer architecture that Mega East does. So when we talk about Mega East as a first real-time blockchain, we mean that's a high throughput, extremely low latency, which means the moment you start sending a transaction to that transaction getting recorded on a blockchain is 10 milliseconds. And that's as good as Web2 gets, by the way. So now why does all this matter? Because you all know like technology does not matter at this point. I mean, I don't have to pretend that you know our tech is gonna go to the moon and some, yeah, no, look at Cardano, like you don't need tech. But what we're trying to do here is, and our thesis is quite simple. Our thesis is that because Mega ETH is so real time, we can actually have real time application on Mega ETH. What is real time application? It's an application that requires low latency, requires instant proof. And oftentimes these are retail consumer applications. So when people ask me, okay, what application are you looking for on Mega ETH? My de facto answer is, Okay, so on Mega ETH, we're so performant, we're gonna make sure DeFi works. DeFi is gonna work as well as centralized exchange because it's a fucking centralized sequencer, right? This thing cannot not work. So we're gonna have a really fast performant DeFi layer, but then everything else I wanna build on Mega ETH has to provide emotional value to end users. I think the days of crypto people talking about pop up fun is gone. We will always have popped up fun and we're all gonna have something similar on Mega ETH. But I do want people to use an application that gives them emotional value, like the way they're using Instagram and TikTok. And Mega ETH is the only possible chain that you can build on it because of latency, right? You can't build this anywhere else. And we're seeing that real time from builders. Builders often come to me, they're, playing, they're building some sort of game that require multiple people to play at the same time. And it will only work on Mega ETH because you don't have latency. So lastly, why are we here? There are many blockchains. You know, people often say, oh, layer two are parasitic to Ethereum, blah, blah, blah. I think they're, again, mid-curving it. A really successful blockchain should not build everything on your own from scratch. What you should be doing is leveraging what other people have done really well. Remember node specialization? Remember how we special, remember heterogeneous network? Which means that at Mega East, we don't build everything by ourselves. We need security. Okay, we're going to go to Ethereum. We need data availability. We're going to go to Eigenlayer. We are very good at building sequencer, and that's our bread and butter. But our whole technology as a, our technology as a whole is one that's performance-driven. 
And we will never be able to become a layer one because if we want to be performant, we will always need a decentralized layer one as our security layer. And this is why it brings me home, my final slide about why we're doing this. We are here to make Ethereum great again. Ethereum needs us, we need Ethereum. And what we believe is by having this application that provides emotional value, we're going to attract more value accrual to Ethereum and to the ETH asset. So I hope you are buying ETH today. Thank you, guys.